The year was 1986. Filipinos flocked the streets of Metro Manila to put an end to the 14-year dictatorial rule of the then-president Ferdinand Marcos Sr. In pursuit of reviving democracy in the country, millions marched along Epifanio de los Santos Avenue, leading to what would be known as a peaceful protest that ushered in a new era of democratic institution for the Filipinos. At the forefront of the Ed's revolution were young people. Nationalism and student activism in the Philippines began to thrive during the 1960s. But what exactly was the role that these universities and student activists played? Where did the University of Santo Tomas stand during the fall of the Marcos regime? While the Tomasian activism remains a place in the spirit of the students today, the claim asks, is the People Power Revolution still relevant in the age of historical distortion? I am Anse Vandal, and I invite you as we revisit the days of the Eze People Power Revolution through the eyes of its witnesses. In the same way, we will learn the relevance of this historical event today at a time when historical distortion is prevalent. This is Edad 37. The Philippine Official Gazette says that students eventually played a key role in the EDSA revolution. From spearheading a protest outside Congress after Marcos's re-election in 1969 to participating in demonstrations outside Plaza Miranda, students ensured that the grievances against the administration were voiced loud and clear. However, the USC community was said to be more reserved and conservative during the days of the revolution. We were raised at a time na uh, hindi namin alam yung ano ba talaga yung nangyayari. And as a typical middle class, ay uh, parang isolated ka eh. Dun sa mga uh, tragedies, sa mga uh, paghihirap ng most of the Filipino people. No? Uh, at yung UST was a manifestation of that middle class culture. No, dahil karamihan naman dito sa UST, mga, mga middle class eh. No? Uh, lower at saka upper middle class. No? So, uh, like yung mga classmates ko, noong 78, no? Uh, know nothing about politics, know nothing about martial law, know nothing about urban poor. Lahat yan, kailangan namin matutunan on our own. Nobody taught us, not the university, not the educational system, no? So it was more challenging, but more exciting, no? learning about new ideas and then putting them into practice. Since the USD administration was watchful of its students and organizations, some USD students were influenced to remain passive against political issues. A special monograph released by the USD Social Research in 1986, titled The Philippine Revolution and Involvement of the Church, found that only 22% of its respondents are willing to join rallies and get involved to change the present situation. Despite the university's reservations, the Mashan activists persisted and trailed after fellow civilians seeking for change. According to De Castro, the Mashans, campus journalists, and student leaders from various colleges and faculties staged walkouts, including those from the Faculty of Arts and Letters, Faculty of Civil Law, College of Education, College of Architecture, Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Medicine and Surgery, College of Nursing, and College of Fine Arts and Design. It was an electric environment um, because everybody would be uh, tuned to the developments that were unfolding every second, every minute. And so uh, students were involved in the, in the march towards EDSA. Uh, and then uh, faculty members, the same. And I think uh, the Dominicans also participated. The late Reverend Father Frederick Fermin, who was the second Filipino rector of UST and the regent of the Faculty of Civil Law at the time, also partook in the peaceful strikes. He and his Dominican brothers led about 500 Thamashians to the Tagumpay ng Bayan Assembly on February 16, 1986. 
um, the faculty club uh, march there, no? Arts and Letters Faculty Club, I was part of it. And then we had the banner that, that uh, we had one of the soldiers go up the, the gate, you know, the gate full of banners. We had it installed there. And then we also brought our own uh, donations, sandwiches, water, the, the, the same thing, so that everybody would be able to eat, especially the soldiers who were, who were inside uh, the camp. So we just turned them over to the, to the people in charge. Huh? Though the Tomasians who crusaded were part of a minority, their involvement had begun three years before the revolution. Following the assassination of former Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr. in 1983, the Kawango struggled to find a venue for the wake of the slain senator and accommodate the growing number of mourners. It was through the assistance of Tomasian Dominicans' father Lucio Gutierrez and father Fidel Villaruel that the remains of Aquino were directed to Santo Domingo Church in Quezon City. The participation of the Tomasians in that sense, having given uh, permission to use uh, Santo Domingo, was so, is something that will will always be a part of history because that started the change. For many, the display of Aquino, who was an outspoken critic of the Marcos administration, catalyzed the People Power Revolution. People. Um, you know, stayed on, on the line, in the queue, uh, just to be able to get a few seconds glimpse of the, of the senator, the former senator, in his um, get up, bloodied, uh, bloodied clothes, no? And then you can see the gunshot, uh, the exit of the bullet, and so on and so forth. And so it's very, um, it's very dramatic no? and very interesting. I think it is what galvanized a large number of young people. It made them ask many questions. Why? How did it happen? Uh, why did it happen? And so on and so forth. The Mashian activists sought to amplify their political advocacies through their school organizations. After graduation, especially after the assassination of Ninoy, I uh, to scale up in terms of political action around the country, no? around the country, which was basically the precursor of EDSA. Dahil from 83 to 85, 85 yung snap election, no? I, people are no longer indifferent, people were no longer ignorant, people were no longer afraid. So that was a time when uh, student power became people power. We are currently at the Manila Cathedral Basilica in Intramuros, the first cathedral in the Philippines and a final resting place of the former prelates of the Archdiocese of Manila. The role of the Catholic Church on the 1986 EDSA Revolution became significant, especially when then Archbishop Jaime Cardinal Sin appealed to the public through Radio Veritas asking for the help of Filipinos and Christians to exercise their rights for freedom through non-violence. Nung naging active si Cardinal Sin, the church nagbago ng tono. They also became critical of the government. So at that time, na appreciate na nila yung student power. Na appreciate na nila yung press freedom. With the endorsement of the Roman Catholic Church, more Filipino Christians and religious organizations rallied to the streets. It was also at this time when the University of Santo Tomas began empowering campus activism and campus journalism. We went out. Because according to my, my grandfather, he had this he had this high hopes that despite the wrongdoings of the present administration at that time, he doesn't believe that this government, that we Filipinos, possess that Western culture of extreme political violence. Filipino activists, in their endeavor to carry out a bloodless revolution, formed human barricades against armored personal carriers sent by Marcos Sr. And the nuns, I'm sure you've seen the pictures of the nuns and the civilians um, stopping them in their tracks, um, uh, prevented that from, from happening. And so the violence is not from the people, it is from the orders of uh, government. As time goes by, I started to develop this perspective that what happened during EDSA People Power Revolution 
was not just a normal historical turn of events, but rather something that symbolizes how advanced we Filipino when it comes to political understanding and participation. Some people say that what happened in EDSA People 1 was just a natural offshoot of leftist struggle. But for me at that time, now, as I experience it, as, 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 as I am learning the different narratives and perspective of what really happened during that time, for me it's, ano eh, it's, it's an earlier departure of Filipino political values from the traditional conservative political obedience into more into a neoliberalist you know, kind of empowerment. The Edge Revolution is a movement that led in an effort to bring democracy back to the Philippines. It's a historical movement that proved the capability of the people to topple dictatorship. We commemorate the Edge Revolution every February 25. Some people remember this day as the day when millions of Filipinos marched together, while others remember the Marcos dictatorship itself. The many years of martial For more than three decades, I hindi na ipasok sa curriculum ng ating educational system what happened during the martial law years. Yung mga human rights violations, yung economic inequality, no? yung uh, borderism, no? uh, hindi na ipasok sa ating sistema ng, ng edukasyon para yung succeeding generations ng mga Pilipino ay nakita yung problema at uh, namulat para wag na yang uh, pabalikin. Today, social media is added in the equation. And many have seen how it can be used as a vessel to spread distorted information. No? Kaya nung pumasok ang social media na in-scale up ang uh, disinformation and revisionism of history, mas madali. Dahil walang educational foundation uh, two successive generations about what really happened. Um, may access tayo sa social media at the same time yung karamihan sa atin is nawawalan na ng tiwala sa mga news sites, sa mga credible news sites, di ba? Laganap na dito yung panonood ng mga Pilipino sa YouTube, sa TikTok, um, pagbabasa ng mga, sa mga Facebook pages, na kung titignan din natin is hindi natin malalaman kung tama ba o hindi yung impormasyong binibigay nila. Doon nagsimula yung disinformation campaigns. Doon nagsimula yung uh, historical revisionism. And I think that's one of the things that um, we really have to... We really have to look, keep an eye on, especially sa next na elections. Kung totoo siya, we didn't think na social media would be used this kind of way. No, una, we kala natin na pa-share share lang tayo ng photos, ganito, ganyan. Pero, um, even big companies are um, funding these this, this information campaigns. In a way, na-victimize ang kabataan dahil of the failure of our educational system. Today, the Philippines remain to have polarized political beliefs. On one hand, there are those who believe that Ferdinand Marcos Sr. has brought about the golden age in Philippine history. On the other hand, there are those who believe that the Marcos administration has done more harm than good for the Filipino people. Ang um, pagkakaroon ng belief na maganda ang golden e na maganda ang martial law na ito ay golden era. Hindi natin sila masisisi kung maniniwala sila diyan dahil in the first place kung titingnan natin um, titigan natin, sa YouTube pa lang, ang dami na nagkakalat ng mga vloggers na nagsasabi na ang martial law ay isong golden era, ganyan-ganyan. At kung titignan natin, hinahayaan lang talaga siya ng estado, di ba? Na malaganap ang ganitong fake news, fake informations, na nanuniwala naman ng masa. At dahil ang masa is wala kang, um, eh, ang masa is wala na, na, hindi na rin nakikita ang importansya ng pag-research kung tama ba to o hindi. Uh, Siyempre, nandun na tayo sa puntong maniniwala na tayo na ito na yung tama dahil ito lang yung impormasyon na meron tayo. One of the main weapons of Marcos consistent sen uh, senior at junior, pareho silang ginagamit, is yung myth-making. Like, they like peddling not true um, 
untrue stories about them, katulad ni Marcos Sr., uh, gumawa siya ng, he made this entire uh, persona na meron siyang ano, m- medals from the war. He made his entire personality about it, but that's not true. Hindi valid yung mga nakuha niya kamong uh, nakuhan yung medals and we can see that pattern ng ngayon so uh, sobrang ano lala ng uh, fake news peddling nila ng propaganda making nila in the past and that worked in the past so if hindi tayo vigilant enough ngayon if hindi tayo like magiingay enough about the fact that this is happening ma ulit yun Hindi naman lahat yun, pero maulit yung pattern na yun, magpapaulit-ulit lang tayo. So, talagang dapat active tayo on our fight against misinformation, lalo na as artlets. However, there are those who believe that there isn't only one political side who engages in propaganda and historical distortions. Kasi, kasi remember, nung bago sila manalo kay Marcos, Yan sila Cory, yan sila Ninoy. Nagpaint sila ng opposite picture eh. So, meron merong historical experience kay Marcos Sr. Nagpaint sila ng picture na kakaiba dun sa kay Marcos Sr. Kasi tingnan mo ah, ito naging effect tuloy. Honest opinion ko naman to eh. No? Ah, Sa sobrang revisionism nila, uh, nila Cory, tsaka nila Ninoy kay Marcos, napaasa tuloy nila yung tao na pag nawala si Marcos at pumalit si Cory, napakagandang Pilipinas na yung papalit. After the Marcos administration came the rule of Corazon Aquino. While many looked up to her and her administration as a warm depart from the last, there are those who view the Philippines' return to democracy in a different light. Actually, nagulat ako ah, kasi nung time ni Marcos, simulang bata ako ah, hanggang nag-high school, never namaril ang army sa tao. And then, kakabungad pa lang ni Cory Bulaga, Menjuela Massacre. Nagulat kami lahat nun. Akala ko ba okay ang si Cory? Bakit? gumamit ng bala. Siyempre may violence ng time ni Marcos ha, namumok po kasi yung mga pulis noon. Tsaka ay yung constabulary, papaluin ka talaga. Pero hindi ka babarilin. Hindi ko naman sinasabing worse si Cory ha? kasi for example, ang ganda nung ginawa ni Cory na constitution, itong 1987 constitution. Gumamit siya ng mga experts talaga. At saka grabe yung protection ng human rights. Tapos binalik din ni Cory yung uh, yung rule of law in a way na ultimo presidente kinakasuhan yung si Beltran yata yun, parang kinasuhan. So, marami rin namang ginagawa si Cory, pero it's not as rosy as they pictured it dun sa historical revisionism na ginawa naman ng yellow. Kaya tuloy na galit ng tao. While millions of Filipinos viewed the Marcos administration as a dark age for the Philippines and saw EDSA as a milestone for Philippine democracy, the other side of the coin begs to differ. More than five decades since their father's reign of terror, the Marcoses remain persistent in denying the atrocities that led to the first EDSA revolution. For Marcus Jr., the year 1986 bore witness to the dark days of their family and the country. The year is 2023. Exactly 37 years since the Filipinos have barricaded the streets of Ibibanyo de los Santos. After four decades later, we ask, is the SA People Power Revolution still relevant at the age of historical distortion? For me, um, for me, a people power revolution is hindi nagtatapos doon sa EDSA. May bagong battle arena na, hindi na lang sa kalsada, pero nasa social media na rin nalaban. Despite the horrors of historical distortions, their pursuit of justice continues to withstand the test of time. Uh, for the longest time, the bayan naging panawagan natin is never forget. So I think uh, for the continuation of the history, to make the history not stagnant in the past, to make it actually impact a new generation of people, we have to continue um, remembering 
the horror of martial law in order for it not to happen again. We have to understand history, the facts, um, all its facets, not just the good sides, but also the bad sides, to, uh, to um, inform our decisions in the present and also in the future. Kasi kapag kakalimutan natin na once uh, we were under dictatorship, na once a lot of, you know, uh, the lives of journalists, of activists perished, kapag kinalimutan natin yun, sinasayang natin yung mga uh, lumaban in the past in hopes for a, a democratic country, an actual democratic country. But the fight is no longer simply a fight for freedom and justice. Through people power revolution, we were taught to grasp unto our fervor, the same fervor we need to resist those who continue to distort truth. Abi tayo eh no. Ah, uh, wag kang babasa ng isang libro tapos tatanggapin mo na as truth 'yun. Dapat open mind ka. Hindi siya magdadala ng kadali. It's going to be uphill. No? The truth is always uphill. No? Uh, pero uh, yun naman yung challenging sa inyong generation. No? Uh, uh, nothing is easy. Uh, pero somebody has to do it. At katulad namin noong panahon namin, we were just a small minority. No? Uh, Kakaunti lang kami. Isang platitong mali. <laughs> no? Na eventually, uh, parang COVID, we infected all the others. <laughs> no? <laughs> Now more than ever, parang as student activists then, This is the perfect time to say na Lika, mag-aral tayo sa lipunan. There's there is so much to learn about this country and um, about the very system that wronged us. The Tomasians since the Philippine Revolution since the Spanish period up to the, up to the present, we are consistently critical on things that is happening not only in our society, not only in economics, but more importantly when it comes to politics. Very vocal tayo. We have, we have produced so many critical writers, no? journalists, and I think they, they resonate practically how relevant and, and also critical Tomasian in extracting accountabilities, not only to public institutions, but even to private On the commemoration of the 37th anniversary of the People Power Revolution, current President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. offered his reconciliation to Filipinos with different political beliefs. With all the facts and evidence that have withstood the test of time from that period, is reconciliation what we need, or is it justice? I don't think that... Uh, Modern, uh, modern life will be, will be the way it is without, uh, without this idea. And, and we are all fortunate to be able to experience in different levels, in different uh, degrees, manifestations of uh, equality, justice, and freedom. And so we must relish, we must protect, we must defend these values. Whenever and wherever we see that they are in danger, we must protect the idea of equality, the idea of justice, especially of freedom, especially because. Filipinos from all walks of life gathered to oust a dictatorial rule. It was a series of events that emboldened the Filipino people to call for political change in the country. There are several interpretations of what the EDSA People Power Revolution may have done for the Filipinos and the country. Some may see it as a great demonstration of a bloodless revolution, while others see it as a culmination of another propagandist subtle yet successful attempt to replace the helm of power. No matter how different or same the Filipinos remembered EDSA 1, as long as there are those who remember. This will be a warning sign to anyone who will impose another dictatorial rule in the country. This is Anne Sabandal, and this has been Edad 37.